Yes. Hello. Uh, How you doing? Hello. We have we have the man of the hour. The man of the hour. Spank, what's going on? All right. All right. I'm sorry about that, man. <laughs> no, no problem at all. No worries at all. Um, so yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome F Green. I know he popped in. Uh, Vivi as well. And uh, I don't know who hate you, but welcome. Um, to, so um, this is um, basically just a call regarding uh, the business cycle. So, uh, Spent wanted to uh, let me just mute you for a second because you've got some background noise going on. Um, Spent wanted to ask, um, I guess, and get some clarification on the, uh, the business cycle. And maybe some other things as well we could cover. I've got a little bit of time on my hands this afternoon. Um, so again, any any questions you guys want to ask regarding um, uh, you know the fundamentals, whether it's economic cycles, inflation, interest rates, um, feel free to to ask and put them in the chat. So uh, and I can just uh, try and go over anything that you guys may not um, you know understand or may need clarification on. So um, with that being said. Spank, if you want to, yeah, just ask maybe, you know, your questions or a couple of questions specifically regarding, you know, the business cycle and what you want to just clarify. You can unmute yourself. Yeah, so for me, I'm, so for me, I'm like doing top down analysis and, uh-huh. and uh, yeah, I'll just, I'm, I'm always getting stuck of like, you know, I know it's not a, you know, a hundred percent where we going to be at in the uh, GDP cycle. But I always get um, confused of of the part, like, you know, like, you know, what 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 you know, what part of the cycle we in, you know, using GDP and um, I I use GDP and jobs or whatever, unemployment rate, you know, whatever. Right. Okay. so it's it's at the moment and in this particular point in time, you were set because I know you've got um, the background is going on one second. Yeah. Thanks, Pink. Um, like, so the, 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 the business cycle is what we know to typically happen and what has happened historically. Yeah. So everything in the, um, I guess in the, uh, fundamental PDF and the test and that, yeah, is based off of just what we know to be true about, you know, economics, um, historically. Now we're in a very strange time, right? This, and this is one of the reasons why when we recently had the, uh, the U S go into a technical recession. Yeah. Uh, we had a, I guess the governing body, I, I always keep remember forgetting what the, uh, what the governing body are called, but basically I think they're called uh, something. I can't remember what they're called. Anyways, they basically declared the fact that we're not in a recession. Yes, technically, we've had, we'll say we, but the US have had two um, negative quarters of, of, of growth, quarterly growth, right? And so, you know, but they haven't declared a recession. And normally it's because of the fact that, um, you know, you would need, I think, unemployment to, to and, and employment to also reflect what would typically be a recession. Now we've got the opposite, right? We've got low unemployment, you know, great employment, but we're in a technical recession. So it's almost like, well, where are we in terms of um, on the on the business cycle, right? And as you said, I'm glad you said, well, I'm glad you kind of said it in terms of, you know, it's not perfect and nothing ever is perfect this is just i guess a template of what we should look towards but also we need to be dynamic enough in our thinking to understand that you know expansions or recoveries don't always lead to expansions if everything was that simple then it would be fantastic right in fact an expand a recovery yeah can lead to a um uh, you know back to a, a bit of a recession I wouldn't necessarily say bust or slump, but it can actually, you know, go back because we could end up falling backwards into a bit of a recession, right? The recovery could fail, yeah? And then we could, like I said, end up back into, um, you know, negative growth. So although, yes, we understand the, the cycle from the perspective of how it should operate and how economies generally do operate, there are times where, You know, there could be, for example, we could go from a boom to a bit of a contraction, but then back to boom again, 
right? So we have to recognize where we are or potentially, or where we are, first of all, and then potentially where we are going to, right? Which is really what Fundamentals is all about. It's about future value and future projections. Now, everyone kind of knows that the, the on the horizon is a potential um uh, is a potential recession right we've seen it in all of the articles that we've been reading recently if you have been reading them so we've been seeing you know europe potentially going into a recession the uk going into a potential recession the us potentially avoiding a recession or having a you know maybe into a light recession i, I posted some some things today i think blackrock was saying um in in their video that you know recession is actually you know, quite unlikely, right? So it's almost like there's there's a fork in the road. So do we head into a recession, right? Or do we not? Do we continue to potentially, you know, grow and still recover and maybe go into the expansion phase, right? So into the recovery phase or potential expansion or stay in a recovery expansion. And by the way, I think I think the the the, the some of these um uh, economic states are also interchangeable as well um, in terms of, um, you know, you could you could be in a recovery phase, yeah, or into a, a potential expansion phase. And, you know, for, for a little while, which then may sit, and we may never really get to the boom phase. So we could see an expansion, but then we could skip the boom and maybe go straight into a potential contraction. Yeah, as well. So again, this is not set in stone. It's not a case of, you know, we're going into six and we're going to go back into, we're definitely headed into a boom. It, 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 that may not happen. That may not happen. Typically it does, but it may not. There are things that happen in life, right? And nothing is certain. So at the moment, it's, it's, we're in this, we're in this um, strange phase where we've got potential economic slowdown but what we don't have in that economic slowdown into a recession is um, high unemployment, which is what we would typically see in a recession and low employment. Yeah. So it's again, it's a very, very strange one. Um, this is the first time I'm living through something like this or, uh, you know, trading through it. And so what really is, you know, important in terms of what's more important, I guess, is actually, I think, understanding where we are potentially headed rather than where we actually are. And it's obviously great to see where we actually are. But remember, the market is always forward thinking. Yeah, it's always looking to price in. Yeah, what the value of a currency is based off of, um, you know, uh, 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 it's, it's the, the future. Yeah. So whether we whether some some people might, you know, assume that we're, we over the past maybe few months or years, we might have been probably in the expansion phase. Did we ever touch the boom phase um, with the economy? Um, things have been a bit upside down when it comes to, um, you know, COVID was a bit of a strange one because we had massive, you know, massive dip when you consider negative GDP. If you go to trading economics, one second, you'll see what I'm talking about. If we go to trading economics, you'll see from a GDP perspective, you know, we've had, you know, low lows, high highs, and then we've kind of um, been bouncing around a little bit. One second. So if we go to... Uh, oh, quick question. Yep. So basically you're saying, so I ain't up saying basically, but you're saying kind of like we can stay in either phase for uh for years at a time or or yeah, maybe yeah. months at a time exactly exactly we can, we can stay in there we can we can be in the expansion phase for years right we can and we could never necessarily you know uh, uh maybe reach the boom phase because the boom we might for example plateau right we might be in a nice sweet spot where you know the, the economy is ticking along but it doesn't necessarily like a boom would be for example china over the you know over maybe that you know since the 90s right where you had that massive economic boom that massive commodities boom did 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 we ever have we seen anything like that in the us or the uk over the past five six seven years no not really right we haven't seen that kind of boom so 
you know, it, 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 we can be in that recovery expansion phase for a little bit, but we're not, we're not, what we're not doing is we're not trying to see where, what, 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 let me put it this way. Although we need to see where we are, um, it's what's more important is where we are going. Will we continue to stay in this expansion, potential growth phase of the economic cycle, or could we see the go into the contraction, um, you know, bust, you know, recession bust slump phase? That is really what we're trying to trade. Yeah. So going back to what I was trying to talk about, so indicators, countries, uh, United States, and let's go to uh, GDP growth rate, right? So you can see, I mean, let's actually maybe take a bit more of a step, step back, right? So you can see pretty much from 2014, you know, we've kind of been in this, and when I say we, I mean, you know, the US has been in this um, strange phase, right? Over the last three, four years, and then you go back even more, and it's it looks like it's just, you know, flatlining a bit, right? But within this, you would have had potential contraction, but we didn't actually go into a recession, right? You didn't go into a recession. Then that could have been, if I remember correctly, you know, it was going into the recovery expansion phase, right, of the economic cycle. Because remember, two negative quarters, you need two negative quarters of GDP growth, right? It, it happened back in 20, I guess, 14 for maybe a period, it might have been a quarter or so. And then you had, you know, what would have been a potential recovery expansion, a bit of a contraction, maybe, you know, you know what I mean? It's, it's, not, it's not set in stone. It's not like one thing follows the other exactly. Yeah, because the, you know, the, the, the Fed, the government are really trying to steer the economy um, as best they can. But you did have... And, and in this period, you, you have had periods of economic recoveries, economic expansions, and then maybe a bit of a contraction and then recovery again and expansion. And then we've had this where you had this massive, you know, drop in GDP. And then we had this massive um, recovery uh, expansion. Would you I would hesitate to call that a boom? Yeah, because, you know, definitely the economy wasn't booming. Um, and then we've had this period where, you know, pr um, the economy contracted again. And then, do you know what I mean? So it's, 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 it's a very, um, it's a very difficult thing to, to say, you know, to try and predict that we are definitely going into the boom phase from a, re from a recovery or an expansion phase. Does it, I, I hope I will, I'll explain this. Okay. Um, so that dip in GDP was a risk. Well, no. Well, as in as in currently, as in this here, you're talking about spank. No, the other dip, like the the big in oh, 2020. This, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah so that that, right that would have been that would have you know been the, the the recession, right? This is where COVID happened at the beginning of 2020. Yeah. So this is where, you know, unemployment, you know, went went you know kind of through the roof, and then um, you know people were being laid off and businesses were closing, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then we quickly recovered, right? We went into that recovery phase really, really quickly and then expanded, but then prices, you know, I'm going to say prices, but GDP contracted again. And, you know, but what was most important was just understanding at, at every point where we were potentially going. When we were in this, you know, the, 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 the recession and potential heading into the bus slump phase, you know, one of the questions was potentially, well, for how long, right? How long are we going to stay down here? Or are we going to go into the recovery phase? Or are we going to continue to stay in this um, recession, you know, and bust or slump phase? Again, nobody really knew. It took, I think, most people by surprise, the economy uh, recovering as quickly as it did, right? Nobody could have um, really seen such a quick recovery um, after, you know, an unprecedented global lockdown, right? So as we know, again, two consecutive quarters, right, of negative growth is considered um, a recession. And there was a recession um, in that period, but then we quickly expanded. So I guess getting to really the point in, in, in you know, and to, to kind of wrap this up in terms of, where how do we trade fundamentals how do we identify where we are so let's do a let's do a consensus if anything right if you 
would say on the economic cycle over the past six months, yeah, over the past, say, six months um, or year, I would say, over the past year, where you are, let's say, for example, the US, you've seen this type of growth, a bit erratic, right? A bit, you know, a bit up and down prices, um, uh, GDP has kind of been, you know, growing and then maybe contracting a little bit, et cetera, et cetera. Now, would you have said, what phase of the economic cycle would you have said this is? And not necessarily looking at the chart so much, but just based off of your own experience in terms of, you know, employment, unemployment, you know, your personal um, uh, circumstances and what, and what you've seen in the economy over the past, you know, year, year and a half, um, what would you say? Uh, has been where would you be in the economic cycle would you say we've probably been more in the recovery phase of the economic cycle yeah so this being you know bus slump so we definitely weren't in all right let's let's let's, let's do a process of elimination were we in the bus or slump phase of the economic cycle over the past two years does anyone would anyone say would anyone say that over the past two years we were in the in, in the bus slump phase of the economic cycle. No, Spank says no. I would say no. Vitaly says no. Right. So definitely not. We definitely haven't been in the bus or slump phase since we had the rollout of the vaccine um, and people been getting back to work. You know, job creation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, we, we could never say that it was in the bus slump phase. Right? Would you say then we were in a recession phase? Right. Were we in a in a recession phase over the past of, oh, you know, over the past two years? Did it feel like a recession to you guys? No. Right. So then we just eliminate that. Right. So we haven't had, again, high unemployment, low employment, etc. Right. Which then leaves a few. Right. Were we really in were we booming? In fact, would you consider the fact that, you know, we are in the we were in the boom phase of the economic cycle? Would anyone can you know assume that over the past uh, couple of years? Would anyone say that we were in the boom phase of the economic cycle? And maybe those who are old enough to maybe recognise a bit of a um, a bit of a boom um, would be maybe something to compare it to. Would be does anyone remember the period probably bef you know around just before maybe the uh, the the housing crash of uh, two thousand and seven two thousand and eight? you know, where everyone was pretty much buying property and, you know, everything was lovely, right? We had just come out of the, uh, I think, what was it called again? The um, uh, the dot-com bubble when everything was uh, was looking all right. I and mean, we were in that kind of um, rosy period. Maybe it might have been rosy for you, but, you know, for the, for the economy. Does everyone remember that period? I would, I would probably say that's maybe, you know, as close as, yeah, as close as an artificial boom as you can probably, you know, call it, right? You can call it a bubble. You can call it a bubble, but would you then? Would you still say we were we we were in more more of a recovery phase or the expansion phase? That would be that would feel like what the expansion phase was like. So if you compare that to maybe the past two years, yeah, since we recovered from COVID, does it feel the same as that? Does the last two years feel the same? as you know maybe not exactly I, I would say the same thing edwin it wouldn't really feel the same so it's not really a boom yeah which then kind of leaves really the options of recovery yeah expansion and contraction right so we've eliminated really the extremes and we would probably say you know, I would probably guess we were somewhere between the recovery and the expansion phase. That's where I, what I would say where we were. And yeah, but QE made a lot of people spend, absolutely, because they had to, you know, um, uh, support the economy and uh, support businesses 100%. But to, to kind of identify where we've been or where, you know, over the past two years, would anyone disagree that we were probably somewhere between the recovery and an expansion phase, especially when you think about, you know, um, 
uh, decent uh, GDP and, and, and employment. Anyone would disagree with that? Or would anyone, anyone, anyone agree with that? More of a recovery. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Either way, right? Either way. That, that times it did look like we were, you know, heading into the expansion phase. Yeah, but everyone's pretty much saying probably more of a recovery phase. Right, brilliant. So recovery, stroke expansion, but more, more in the recovery phase, right? So there we are. So we've kind of established now where we are likely. And it is kind of subjective again to, to your life and where you are as well and how well you're doing in life, right? But overall, I would have said we were somewhere between that recovery going into a potential, you know, expansion at one point. Obviously, you know, the recency bias would suggest otherwise. But over the past two years or, or year, at least year and a half, you know, we've I think we've definitely been more in the recovery phase. Yeah. So that's where I would say we are. Now, what's more important, yeah, is understanding where we're going, right? Because we need to understand future value to get ahead of, you know, the market. So where do we go um, there is no exact number to quantify. No, there isn't an exact number, unfortunately. Of, and fundamentals don't necessarily work like that. It's more of, it's, think about it, I think, more in, in terms of um, more of a trend in terms of looking back over, um, you know, a period of time rather than um, a, a specific number. That's what I would say, because... Ultimately, that's how you measure growth, right? It's over a period of time. So just look at maybe GDP over the past, you know, few, maybe year or so. One second, let me just uh, do something. So you would probably look at, you know, the last. So for example, from January, yeah, look at from January 2021 to where we are currently. Yeah, this was, we had positive growth, 4.5, 6.3, 6.7, a bit of a dip, 2.3, 6.9. Yes, the last two quarters haven't been great, but that wouldn't suggest, you know, those numbers over the past, you know, uh, you know uh, from, from the beginning of January. And even when you think about, you know, just before, let me just turn off my COVID's mic. Mute. Mute, 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 mute. Can I mute you? Makoba, if you can mute yourself. Why can't I mute it? All right. Um, yeah, when you look at the actual data from, 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 say, you know, end of 2020, towards the end of 2020, um, the economy, yeah, was growing at a decent rate, right? It was actually growing decently. So, again, when I say, you know, expansion, um, uh, recovery, stroke expansion, yeah, Again, it can be a slightly subjective, but we definitely weren't in the other phases. We, ne we definitely weren't in the boom phase and we definitely weren't in the recession bust slump phase. And we weren't really contracting in terms of, you know, consistent contractions. So, yeah, expansion, recovery expansion phase. And now we've kind of, you know, gone into this uh, recession phase. So it kind of feels, I guess, more that we're heading back into a recession, right? But looking at this over a period of time, I would have said, you know, expansion, recovery expansion phase. Now, we know where we are. Yeah. Where are we going? Um, Edwin says, you know, almost expansion. Yeah, you can say almost expansion, maybe just recovery. But where are we going now? Again, just, just quick, quick. I was just going to ask. Yeah. I was just going to say, I, it, so we got the two negative quarters, uh -huh. but... So I'm so I'm guessing since unemployment rate is uh, still you know um, tightening, I guess that's what that's why they are not saying that we technically in the uh, exactly uh, okay All right. exactly gotcha. Gotcha. you know do you know what as well I want to find this I don't know if anyone I think I think I think let me let me just look for this quickly there's a there's a um, there was a really good article um, with or from um, Wells Fargo. Give me two seconds, yeah? Give me two seconds. Let me just find this. I've got this uh, got the group off screen. Ah, typical. Somebody wants to join now. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, let me just find this because I'm in the meeting now. I'll just uh, 
I'll just do it. Um, it was from, does anyone remember that article from uh, Wells Fargo where it was talking about um, a recession? I made a mental note to see if I could just save it. I'm, just, I'm sure I'll put it in the bank analysis research and scroll up. Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo. Here we go. This is the one. All right, guys. This is it. Everyone can see my screen? Yep. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. Cool. So this is this was really important to read. And I'll put the, the link, I'll put the link in the uh, in the chat. Have a read of this spank and everybody. Because remember as well, like I said, the, I'm, I'm showing you what typically happens. And as we know, we're living through, you know, unprecedented times. So um, this is the first time I'm living through this as well. So I'm figuring this stuff out just like you are. But it's not so much, um, you know, in, in terms of you try not to think so statically about it and kind of think to yourself, you know, this is what should happen in terms of the economy um you know moving forward it's it's it you have to kind of very and i use the word again keep using it be a bit dynamic with it is just is just follow along with what the banks are saying and doing more than what you would probably read in the textbooks the textbooks give you a great foundation and you should definitely understand that. And as long as you do understand it, you'll understand what the banks are saying. But if you follow along with what, you know, these guys are, are telling you, then um, it makes things a lot easier. So um, one of the things, where was it now? It says, it's basically in a summary, it was saying that even if GDP posts back-to-back -back declines, so this was, I think, just before it did post back-to-back -back declines. The economy is not yet in recession, though we suspect it will be in six months. So they think six months from basically by the end of the year. Yeah. So because defining something as important as a recession is more than mere semantics. Yeah. So they're telling you, you know, don't be so, you know, specific about, you know, defining where we are, because it is very, very dynamic in terms of, um, uh, you know, what we will determine to be or what the world does determine to be a, um, a, a recession. Yeah, Yes, we know two negative quarters, but a recession is more than mere semantics. Yeah, this report unpacks the right variables to watch and introduces uh, at a new glance. Sorry, introduces introduces a new at a glance tool to get the next recession call right. So they're just telling you instantly. Yes, the world knows that we've gone into to you know negative quarters. Yeah, but it's more than that because. We understand the jobs aspect of things. This is not a usual um, or a typical situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, it says two, two consecutive quarters of negative growth is one working definition of a recession, but it's not the official one. It's strange that because we just come to find that out now. Yeah. So, again, I think we were talking about them moving the goalposts and whatever it is. And yeah, they have, right? They, they kind of have moved the goalposts and I think they've had to um, in terms of what the definition of uh, a recession is because, again, we're in very strange times, very unprecedented times. We don't have, we're not in what we would typically call a recession. There's still, like you say, a tight labour market, et cetera, et cetera. So... They say that the, the definitive U.S. recession call is up to the National Bureau of Economic Research. Yeah, so that's the uh, the organization uh, whose business cycle dating committee determines the start and end dates for each economic cycle. So maybe you want to Google them, keep, um, you know, a tab, keep a tab on basically what they're talking about and what they're what they're doing and when they label um you know the economy to be in an official recession i guess we would know about it anyway because we'd see it on bloomberg and we'd read about it right um the committee considers a recession to involve a significant decline in economic activity that is spread across the economy and lasts more than a few months in quotations 
the committee relies on six variables of monthly activity when dating an economic cycle, which fall into our four primary categories, production, income, employment, and spending, or what is uh, what we refer to as PIEs. In short, we do not think the economy is in a recession at present. But if our forecast is correct, this is not so much a, a, of a head fake as it is a harbinger of worse to come as we are forecasting the economy to enter a mild recession early next year. So we've defined where we are, yeah, the expansion phase, where we're potentially going into a potential recession, just wasn't a recession or, or what, you know, the, 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 um, the National Bureau of Economic Research would term um, a recession, but we are definitely heading into what the contraction phase, yeah, is what we are probably into, you know, right now and going into, yeah. So when we see, again, looking at the, um, the uh, where we were over the past, you know, few uh uh, you know, maybe a year or so, we were in that recovery, potentially heading into that expansion phase. And now what's happened is, you know, the economy has gone probably back into the contraction, oh, sorry, about to say recession phase, back into the contraction as we start to slow down. So think about every, I guess the best way to look at this as well is to kind of look at every, um, I guess every, uh, phase of the economic cycle as having a again like a fork in the road or a juncture we could either go into expansion or we could go into contraction even from the contraction phase do we necessarily go have to go into a recession absolutely not we could go basically from a contraction yeah maybe back into and skip the the, the recession and bust slump phase and actually go into a potential, you know, recovery, yeah, or back into a potential expansion phase, yeah. So each one of these can, each one of these phases of the economic cycle, yeah, has an option. And I know it's not reflected on here, and um, you know, as as you know, and it's a great question, which has basically made me kind of uh, figure this out. I wouldn't say figure it out on the fly too much, but you know, just understand it and maybe visualize it because I'm quite a visual person myself. So whenever I'm thinking about things, I tend to think about them in terms of, you know, how to visualize it. And so this is how I'm visualizing each of these um, uh, phases is understanding. Yes, we understand the basics of the phase, but then as we actually delve deeper into the um, uh, each uh, each phase, we can actually again, go in from a recovery to a contraction, a, a, a contraction to maybe back into recovery or an expansion, et cetera. So that's where uh, I guess uh, we we are, right? So right now we are in that, I would say probably now in that contraction phase and especially that's been, um, uh, uh, I guess, uh, confirmed when we, when we think about, you know, stagflation, right? Stagflation, what is stagflation is, when you have economic economic contraction yeah economic contraction and rising inflation so stagflation fears are confirming to us that we are actually in the contraction phase currently we were in this recovery phase you know from um covid yeah, from COVID, we were in the cover recovery, heading into potentially the expansion, but that's obviously not materialized. And we've headed back into the contraction phase with rising inflation, hence stagflation. Um, Ken says, I don't think we hit a hard recession. Uh, I think it will be mild. Yeah, I've, I've been reading that as well. As, as, well, in the US, that is, you know, in the US, I think um, the UK will hit a very hard recession unfortunately i think we're going to be in um we're going to be a uh, harder hit which is the reason why you're seeing the the the, the, the dollar um the pound dollar you know you know what i mean kind of fall off a cliff to a certain degree um and you're seeing um the, the pound just get weaker and weaker um 
it does depend on the growth and the US will have some growth. Yeah, because there is, I think the third, the, the quarter three, I think is is expected to be in the growth phase or there's going to be some, ex, at least some ec economic expansion. I don't know what the number was um, in terms of that. I think if I remember correctly, did, does anyone remember seeing 0.3% or am I making that up? Does anyone remember seeing that number from a third quarter, uh, third quarter growth? I'm not too sure. Um, where do I think growth will come from? <laughs> um, no idea, mate. No idea. It's uh, that's something that I um, I think is uh, something that you, if you want to get into the nitty gritty of it, no idea. If you get into, I think you can kind of maybe try and figure that out in terms of looking at, um, you know, will it come from retail? Who knows? Will it come from manufacturing sector? I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you, Edwin, where it may come from. All I do, what I do know, though, is that the forecasts from banks and the forecasts, um, you know, what the expectations are for the third quarter are for growth. One second. Let me just uh, clear this and let me just go into uh, United States to second quarter. Don't they have the forecasts? I thought they would have had the forecasts by now. Uh, oh. ah, okay. Normally they would have had the um, the forecast for the for the third quarter. I guess we can we can look at it from. Uh, let's look at it. Uh, Edwin says same as last quarter from positive to negative. Um, from positive to negative. It tells what it tells the third quarter. Edwin. Forecasts keep getting revised. Yeah, I mean, they do. They do. Um, one second. Let me just go to the, where I know just off the top of the head where there are some forecasts. And I think ING have updated their, their forecasts. Right. So GDP growth. Third quarter. So it's 1.9. This is what the, the, um, yeah, the latest, so it's the fifth, sorry. So they've updated their their um, quarter. So they're expecting growth, at least in, for for uh, for the US and then 1.6, sorry, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. Um, and they're expecting a potential, uh, doesn't look like we're potentially going into a recession in, in the okay, we, but the US is, whereas somewhere like the UK, they expect a recession going into at least the first, second quarters, France and Germany. And it's difficult because they haven't got, oh, actually, they do have the Eurozone. They say, yeah, so they, they think the Eurozone will start to go to negative in the um, in the first and second quarters, right there. And stay in there for at least three quarters. Yeah, so I and you are more positive on their um, US, um, you know, economic cycle and uh, the growth phase, whereas Euro, they don't see Europe. Um, they see Europe going into a deeper recession. They see the US going into, or actually avoiding a recession. Um, so Ken says, so in the US, manufacturing is still growing, but services are slowing, which is expected after the summer. Also, US is starting to manufacture things like chips, etc. Look at business confidence. Yeah. And I guess for, for you, Ken, because I know you look at um, you look at those things. That makes, you know, perfect sense for me. I, for better or for worse, I really haven't um, looked into you know the 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 the, the nitty gritty when it comes to um, I guess the more the more uh, uh, micro side of things. I tend to take a, a top down view, and whatever the banks forecast, yeah, and whatever I'm reading in the um, you know from 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 the uh, uh, the PDFs that we read and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, that's where I guess I get my information from, and I'm looking at maybe the bigger picture. So. Where growth is going to come from, whether however it comes, if the banks are saying that it's coming some from somewhere, I'm just going to trust them. But if you do want to go into you know the details like Ken does, 
then definitely be my guest. Either way, you know, as long as we arrive at the same destination, as far as we're both um, looking at the data from the from the correct perspective, and that data is correct, that's with that's what that's that's, that's what I'm uh, kind of more concerned with. Uh, Edwin says, with high USD, it's hard to sell manufactured goods. Um, it might be, it may be Edwin, but at the end of the day, these guys are the smartest guys. You know what I mean in the room, yeah. And we can all have, you know, we can all speculate on what will happen, you know what I mean, in the future. One thing I've learned to do is just trust in the process and trust in the data. Are they going to be right all the time? No. Yeah. You could be right at the fact that they could, and they could be wrong. But I would say for me, rather than, and the way that I've always, I say always approached it, but the way I've approached it for the last, you know, five, six years is just look at the bigger picture. And, I, and that's what works for me. Whatever the banks are forecasting for GDP growth, yeah, I'm less concerned with the how. I'm just concerned with the smart money are looking at all of these and the top end analysts have looked at all the data for me. And this is where these are numbers that they're coming up with. And I'll trust them. Reason why is because if they're consistently wrong, they're not going to be in the job for too long. Yeah, they're not, they're not, they're not there to, you know, to, to be wrong all the time. They're going to have to be right. And it doesn't matter whether they're right 50, 50% of the time. If they're right and I can make money off when they're right, then that's what matters to me. So I try not to get into um, you know, the, the the meat and potatoes of it as far as all the details of it in terms of um, you know, where growth is coming from. Growth is going to come from somewhere, and that's what they're forecasting. Um, but as I said, I know um, Ken does look at the, uh, you know, manufacturing, um, PMIs, et cetera, services. And uh, you can if you want to, but I personally um, uh, don't feel there is actually a need to. Uh, Spink says, so GDP and jobs can tell us where we're headed uh, next in the cycle from your understanding. And yeah, and it, and it should, right? Because that's really what, what matters. I mean, jobs is or should be and typically has been um the uh, the canary in the coal mine i guess for the economy because of the fact that when you're heading into a recession what should happen and what's happened you know for years gone by decades gone by right um is that you should have rising unemployment yeah and low employment if you start to see that trend then you would think that obviously you're going into a potential recession because businesses are not hiring, more people have got, you know, people have got less money, less jobs, et cetera. But we've had the opposite. We've had, you know, data go into the negative, but we've had a really good labor market. So it's a very, very tough one, very tough one. Hence the reason why Wells Fargo have then turned around and said, yes, we've had two negative quarters, but in fact, there are other things that would determine, you know, us being in an actual recession. Yeah. And this article, if you want to, I would say definitely read this article. Definitely, definitely. We haven't read the whole thing, you know, properly, but it's something that, you know, if you're interested in the, um, the ins and outs, it's 100% important to, uh, to, to read this. They talk about production income employment and spending yeah so those are the things that you that we need to understand as to where and whether we are going into a potential recession or not plus i just let like i said i just ride the wave of the smart money the smart money will tell me right analysts on bloomberg and quotes from you know the guys on pound sterling um you know those guys will say you know what, we're heading into a recession or not. And even if we are heading into a recession, remember, you always have, you can't look at or you shouldn't look at one country in isolation. Remember, always remember this rule. You can't look look at the US as it, you know, it just being in a vacuum by itself. Yes, the US could head, in, head into a recession. But then the question has to be asked, well, even if the US is heading into a recession, are the US the worst 
out of the rest of the 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 the, the, the countries in, in in the world, right? And all the countries that we trade, is it worse than the eurozone? Is it worse than the UK? Because even though we might be heading into a potential recession, it might be a shallow recession, right? Whereas, you know, you've just seen here from the ING forecasts, yeah, that you're seeing Europe potentially head into a deeper recession, right? And the US not heading into a recession. So the point being is that it has to, you have to compare, always compare countries. Never, never ever look at them in terms of just one you know, just one country and what, and what we're doing. It's always a, a comparison. Um, so you said, if you think about, yes, those data sets are both influences uh, of inflation, which says that the, what, what the Fed will do next. Absolutely. Absolutely, because inflation, you know, the economy, the, 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 the Fed have to have one eye on the economy as well as one eye on the inflation. And I did ask the question, um, I think a few weeks ago, what is the, what is this, what are central banks prioritizing? Are they prioritizing, you know, interest rates leading to a recession or the, you know, um, I, I guess, you know, the economy going into a recession or are they prioritizing inflation? Because they know that by hiking rates, you could send your economy into a recession sooner. But central banks are prioritizing inflation, right? They have to because inflation is the bigger threat, which then means that if inflation is the bigger threat, then if, if you know, they have to hike rates. If they were prioritizing the economy, then they wouldn't hike rates as much because they would obviously think to themselves, well, if we keep hiking interest rates, then we're going to head into a recession. A recession is something that we want to avoid. I think they know they know a lot of central bankers know that they probably can't avoid a recession or if they do, it's very tough to do. I know Europe pretty much, it's a, it, it seems like a foregone conclusion that they're going to go into a recession. It just depends on how deep. Same thing with the UK. I think with the US, the US still has, there is light at the end of the tunnel, as they call it, a uh, maybe a, uh, they call it, call it a hard landing or a soft landing. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So you said you read an article um, saying that for the dollar to fall, the euro has to rise because it makes up 40% of the dollar. What do you think? I think it's very simplistic. <laughs> it's, that's, that's a very simplistic, extremely simpl simplistic view. You know, it's like saying in order to see the moon, you know, you have to, the sun has to go down. Do you know what I mean? It's like, well, there's a lot of, you know, physics that go behind it, right? There's a lot of things that go behind that. You can't just say the euro has to rise for the dollar to fall. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know. I don't know what to say on that article. You know, what has 40% of the dollar got to do with Europe, you know, getting themselves out of a recession? Out of, out of a recession? If Europe starts to grow, yeah, then all right, yeah, the, the dollar will be revalued in terms of because money will kind of, you know, there will be traders that will think that, that the euro, that the euro is cheap because you know you have to revalue the euro if they start to grow, yeah, if they avoid all the problems that they have, if you know all the energy crisis, um, uh, you know, inflation problems, if they avoid all of that then you have to revalue the euro, yeah? That has nothing to do with what the dollar is doing. The dollar could be growing still as well. The dollar could be doing the, 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 doing the you know, fantastic, yeah? And I've spoke about this before, in fact. I've spoke about this before and, and when it comes to revaluing a currency. Because, let me see if I can just draw this quickly. Let me just zoom in one sec. Right. Let me just zoom in a bit. Right. If you have a situation where a currency is doing really well, let's just say, for example, that's the US dollar. Right. And then you have a, a country that's doing really bad in terms of, you know, central bank monetary policy, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And let's just say this is the euro. And let's say on a price chart, you see just, you know, the world's worst, you know, or best trend, depending on which side of the market you're on. If you're a technical trader trying to bottom pick, then it's the world's worst, right? If you're going long. But 
the point is is that this is going is being priced in a great a dollar and a terrible euro yeah now if the euro start to have a reverse of the fortune in terms of their you know economically and um and uh, monetary policy wise yeah this cannot this downtrend will not continue to happen doesn't matter what the dollar does doesn't the dollar can continue to grow and expand and go into the boom phase doesn't matter the euro yeah will have to be revalued yeah it has to be revalued because the euro was was, was valued down here yeah based off of it being terrible the euro is not going to have the same valuation if this is obviously price yeah, and this is time. The euro can't have the same, same valuation price-wise, exchange-wise, if it's turning its economic fortunes around. It has to go higher. So, you know, the, the statement that said, the article that you said where it says, you know, the dollar for the dollar to fall, the euro has to rise because it makes up 40% of the dollar. Like, what are they, what are they talking about? What are you reading? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, it's just, it's just saying stuff for saying stuff. We know better than that. You know what I mean? We're looking at what is happening econ economically and then looking at that in terms of value. It's not terrible anymore. It's not in a recession anymore. In fact, they're recovering, going into the expansion, going to, into the boom phase potentially doesn't matter what the dollar's doing. This has to be now revalued higher. Does everyone understand that? Yeah, that's that's just how it goes. Um, and maybe and maybe it has to be context because I think I, I just read Vitaly said it was an ING, something like Euro making up 40% of the DXY basket. Like, ah, I'd, I'd have to read the article, to be fair. I'd have to read the article. Um, you know, if anyone can find the article and then I can kind of put it in, into context. But try not to just read. Maybe, I'm not, and I'm not saying that you did or you, you have or whatever it is. But when, you know, when reading maybe headlines or reading certain things, definitely get, if you can, if you understand it, is you know read definitely the 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 article in its entirety to get to give it the kind of context that it needs i guess because you know a statement like that um isn't isn't you know isn't helpful do you know what i mean it doesn't it doesn't say anything um in terms of um you know what what you should do in terms of uh, you know buying the dollar selling the dollar etc um but those are my thoughts on it though and those are my those are my thoughts on that on that article or what was what was said? Uh, oh, it's not zooming out. What's going on here? Yeah, I'll just refresh it. Right. Um, okay. Was there was there anything else you guys wanted to um, go over? Was there? Was, did I answer everything? By the way, Spank. I know it was a bit long winded. We've been on this call for about an hour. Was there anything else that you wanted to um, ask, or is there anything else anyone anyone wants to ask about? You know. Um, uh, the economy, etc.